My childhood was soaked in the distinct aroma of wood paneling, shag carpet, and Marlboro Reds. Growing up on a farm, I was the classic Generation X latchkey kid. My mother was a secretary, and my father worked the farm and drove a truck. He was a rural amalgamation of Ernest Hemingway and Captain Morgan. In his young life, he was a dashing ladies' man with a quick wit and mischievous smirk. He grew later in life to be a broken man from a different time who was either going to end up in prison or die too young. He never ended up having a mugshot. I grew up largely staring at empty seats where my father should have been. He always had to work. I could hear a lot about a man only being worth his production, but never I love you. I became the first in my family to leave home for college. Can you blame me? Started in church work as a minister, but tired of running for office every single day. So I went into sales. After years in a cubicle, I landed my dream job on the road. My work took me around the world, and far too many hotels knew me by my first name. But my kids and wife barely knew me at all. Work was a great excuse to not be social or connected. I became the top guy at the top company, all of it, but I knew my family through pictures. My wife and kids adore church camp. Due to the kids' ages, they were finally this year going to be all there together. I had never gone. That was one of Dante's rings of hell for me. I had to work. This was our rhythm. This is what we did. Until one day, I got a call from HR. Always a good thing on a Friday, right? They thanked me for my amazing work and then said I was no longer needed and no explanation necessary. So there I was, sitting on the couch. My house felt suddenly much, much larger. I had given that industry everything, including my name. I had no idea what I was going to do. Zero. None. After a moment, I felt the sensation of a hand on mine as I blankly stared into nothing. I caught the eyes of my youngest son, and he couldn't help but ask, So you can come to camp with us? Sure, buddy, I replied. And he jumped for joy. I mean, what else was there to do anyway? Camp wasn't for a month, and surely I'd have a job by then, right? Here's the thing. While searching, I learned if you're a high performer with gray on your chin, nobody wants you. It took over a month to finally find a company with seemingly good people and good pay that realized that I am not 22 years old anymore. We negotiated a start date that allowed for me to go to camp, come back, and hit the ground running. I bought a car and finally had just started breathing a little until the day before we left for camp. The phone rang. It was the gentleman who hired me, telling me that his boss had informed him that they've changed my agreement, will not allow me to attend camp, and I'm required to start immediately, a difference of only five days. And I was to explain to my sons that this is how life is. So I had a choice, to seek value in production and security or to honor my family. It was a bridge I'd been required to cross so many times before. Searching deeply, asking what is my real value, my real identity, is it in production or presence? So I sat there in the car. And camp turned out to be pretty amazing. I had to get a job, so I came back and took a job selling cars. I sold cars for one day because that first day on the lot was the day that I got a call from the team here at Marriage Helper. One courageous step made a bigger impact than an entire life of the opposite. Making that pivotal choice changed everything. Despite the terror of the unknown, I made a bigger decision. So no one cared about my thoughts on how fair or unfair it was. Choosing was on me, and if you are here, you are facing massive problems in your relationship. You have a huge hill to climb. Some of you might not even know if you want to climb it. 
You deal daily with the choice of what is more terrifying, dealing with your marriage or just suffering in silence through it. You're afraid of the stress of action, your partner's reaction, or what if somebody finds out that you're not perfect? This is your time to choose between misery or momentum, between addressing your problems or accepting them, between surrendering to your pain or claiming your potential. If your now isn't acceptable, take a moment and go to marriagehelper.com slash book now, marriagehelper.com slash book now, and book a call with me or any of our other intake specialists that work every day to see to it that what you need aligns with what we do. Our job is to listen to your story and help match you to the best solutions. We will hear you. We will work with you. We might even challenge you to do very hard things, but very good things. So it's time for you to be wildly unconcerned with what was and what is and dive into what could be because we are not what we only produce today. We are all what we choose for tomorrow. So let's see what tomorrow looks like together.